So, hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. Hope everybody's having a great day wherever you are, whatever you may be doing. This is 50 Pips rocking and rolling here, 14th of April, 2019. No trade calls, recommendations, or response for their own stuff. We're here for educational purpose only here on a historic day with Tiger making a beautiful little comeback. So everybody's in a good mood, I hope. Going into the week should be an interesting one. Keep in mind, Monday tax, income tax, deadline day tends to be slightly... Um, bullish slant of a day we've got friday markets are closed as we're going towards the easter holiday so it's a four-day week we'll have to see what's going on as we kick off this earning season while well, we keep on going we already had those uh earnings last week but again will be interesting to see in terms of what to look for just keep on focusing on the financials right we've got city and goldman out on monday so that should be interesting uh, and then, you know, we'll have to see as we start to move through the week, really a lot more interested in uh, in the um, in the tech names as we get, uh, you know, through this uh, uh, this earnings season. Again, earnings should be weak. I think that's not going to surprise anybody, but it's all going to be about the guidance, really. Right. On the data front, it should be very interesting. We do have a lot of data across the board, pretty much from everywhere, China, Europe. Um, uh, U.S. So that's going to be fairly interesting. I think here the the bigger question in terms of uh, uh, possible headline risk is again: Are we going to get something out of China? Are we going to get something out of tariffs? Uh, U.S. Europe tariffs. What the hell is going to happen with uh, with Elon and Tesla? It's been another crazy weekend there. So a lot of things to keep uh, keep our eyes on. Um, I think in terms of shorter term action, everybody's going to be going into this week looking at equities uh, in terms of um, especially the ES and the NASDAQ. They're sitting so close to all time highs. So everybody is going to think it's a given. We're going to blow through those highs. And if you look at something like the, the Russell, everybody's going to think it's a given. We go and press through that 1600. I mean, we'll have to see how that trades. Um, it looks like it's bullish. It looks like that's the way it's going. But we've just been getting these silly little ramps on very thin volume. Uh, the All the pops continue to be in the overnight session. So the move is suspect. It doesn't mean you can't get uh, some aggressive action to the upside. But if we continue to see these low volume rips and it's not on something substantial, I would suspect it's setting up a massive blow off top, but we'll have to wait and see. It's a little bit too early for that. I think here what I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on is action, especially in the tech names and in Apple, because we saw on Friday, Apple was trading a little bit heavy now that the buybacks are are not taking place. And if you think about it, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how NASDAQ trades, how tech names with Apple not having that buyback ramp in it. And also, if you see the way Boeing's been trading, you know, you would not su suspect YM to be able to hold a very, very aggressive bid unless Boeing joins in. So as usual, Boeing and Apple are the key ones to watch. And on the sideline, you want to have a keep an eye on on Tesla because that clearly has the potential to to spook the market if things go uh get very very funky there now in terms of some of the charts so russell um I, I wish there was more to say but you know we're still stuck russell still holding just below the 1600 this is the pivotal level we'll have to see daily closes above we'd expect that 1650 to come quick unless we can get closes above the daily closes above the 1600 we still think the path of least resistance is lower to fill a bunch of those open gaps so that's something you want to keep uh, your eye out on if you look at the uh, ES and we've been looking at this now for a while uh, the, the easiest way to go is to just flip your chart on a on a weekly right and and you see what's happening we're just stuck right so the big question is are we going to get some news that confirms are we going to rip sky rocket higher? Is it going to be one of those vol low vol ramps and then we get a, some kind of a blow off top and we puke? Or do we get a little bit of a, of, a, of a healthy correction on no news and then we attempt a better ramp? You know, that's what you want to watch for. So really keep an eye on these previous highs from, that, from last January to see how we trade. That's a bull bear line uh, that you want to keep your 
your eyes on. Now, the other major markets to look at if you're looking at the ZBs, this is gonna be an interesting one, right? Go back on the weekly and here we're seeing a little bit of a retracement, which is healthy because it looked like we'd actually really, you know, unable to attract new buyers at high. So this is a big test going into the week, right? You want to see if the buyers step back up here, protecting this whole bull bear line, this 145.30s, you know, 146s. If we can't get any daily closes below, we still think that this is the move that's trying to play out, holding that broader um, monthly channel. If we trade back below there from a closing basis, then this could be looking to do some damage to the de downside, right? And, and take out some week long. So that's something to keep an eye out for. I mean, keep in mind that we've still got this April seasonally, traditionally bullish for risk assets. So uh, ES bullish, crude bullish, Euro very bullish, right? So all those things are going to continue to try and play out. We think we've got OPEC meeting this week. Crude, very interesting as it's stuck here. Remember that range it's currently stuck inside is the 65.60 range. It's particularly interesting here because we have that 62.50 that we've been discussing in terms of a level on the weekly chart. So what we'll be looking at very closely here is have we topped out and are we going to take a stab at that 6250 because here if this can't hold and can't take those 65s back out our base case is that those 6250s are going to come in play and that's going to be the bull bear line we, we initiated some tight shorts here but it almost feels like it's too good to be true that it's too easy that the market needs to cause more pain above the 65s before going lower having said that we've taken a stab at the shorts for a move back at the 6250 so we'll have to see on a weekly close we think the 6250 is extremely important below 60s attract above 65s attract and this is still a very choppy range but don't forget the the importance of this level from a weekly perspective you know we'll discuss this again in the, in the near future uh, gold what's going on on gold we're still stuck uh, we suspected that it might be too good to be true if it really ramped up for there it's a messy one i think it's hard to get very very bullish short term as long as you see this kind of action continuing but in the same time, it's very hard to get extremely bearish as long as this support holds. So I think that the, it's all about how we behave in this support. Are the bulls going to come back and try another rip or are they going to lose this? If they lose this support from a closing basis, you know, you can call it 12 uh, 75s. If they lose this, then we expect those 1250s, this 200 to come into play very quickly in in an ugly fashion. We don't think there's an awful lot of edge trading this intraday. We've discussed this before. Um, you know, it is what it is. <clears throat> what else have we got? DXY, you know, we've been talking this for a long time. And, you know, there, there's two ways. I'm not going to go through it again. You know, there's a big, there's a good case for the bull, for the bulls, and there's a good case for the bears. Our base case is still that we're stuck inside this uh, this sideways range and unless something substantial happens you know unless we get a day close above the 98s or a day close below the 96s it's much to do about nothing all these moves we've been sellers um, as long as it works we've been selling this for for this to broadly stay inside this range gun to the head longer term we'd expect this to play out not the opposite to play out but we're very flexible and our again dxy prim, prim, primarily euro and our best way to play that area has been through our euro longs which are still in play and our primary target on that has uh, has has hit now i also posted this on you know we had that for the guys listening to youtube there's a video on euro too also on on the youtube channel we discuss this but basically uh, we were looking for it not to move in a straight line and all this basing action here. We like the asymmetry to, for, uh, to play this to the long side with a minimum target of a move back into these two um, uh, moving averages, the 100 and the 50. So that, that, the primary move, so the initial move, that's done. Now it's time for the bears to step up and hold this, right? The bears need to come in and hold this 100 from a closing basis to force 
more downside. If not, we'll likely see a lot more covering and we'll get into those, you know, final targets uh, in the 114.50s we've got on that. Remember, extension targets uh, on, on partials is, you know, if we go completely crazy, but that we can't talk about that. You know, we can't envisage that right now. You know, you can't shoot for that. That will only be on partials. But this trade is still in play. But broadly speaking, we're still going nowhere fast, right? So we'll have to see uh, what happens this week. So again, it could be an interesting week. It'll really depend a lot on what happens on equities. It'll really depend on the news flow in terms of sting single stock names to get a feel for how things are going. We continue to focus uh, primarily on Apple and Boeing in terms of, you know, kind of... Uh, possible uh, thing out of left field. We're keeping very, very close eye on Tesla. Uh, no big surprise, that's our, our, our favorite uh, single name short for the year. Uh, and uh, so we still expect things to get uglier on that. And again, we'll have to see, but you know, the, the funky action continues. You see how that buying uh, on, on Disney on Friday, you know, we, you know we, we, we'd fully expect that gap to fill. We still have a lot of open gaps on equities. We remain very flexible, very nimble, and we just have to wait and see. You know, it's it's uh, if we see a decent correction in in risk assets or across the board, we would expect that to come in here into the end of the month as we're in this buyback period and in this earnings season, and that's how we're positioned also for the DXY trade. So let's see if we get some traction, guys. Wishing everybody an awesome week. Again, well done to Tiger, and I can't wait to see how this Tesla develops into the open today. Have an awesome one. Take care. Bye-bye, guys.